There are lots of famous and important equations in science. Newton's laws of motion, the laws of electrodynamics, laws of thermodynamics, and lots, lots more. There's one equation that's much more famous than the others, created by one of the world's most famous scientists, and this is, of course, e equals mc squared. But why is it so famous? What is it used for? Where does it come from? And what does it mean? The science behind the equation was first written down by Einstein in 1905 in one of his papers on relativity. But it wasn't until after the Second World War that he first wrote down the equation in its famous form, E equals mc squared. But actually, you can trace back a lot of the science behind the equation to hundreds of years before Albert Einstein. You can almost trace it back to Isaac Newton 200 years before. And lots of scientists have done work and developed the science and the equation since then. But what does the equation mean and what is it used for? The equation tells us that energy and mass in the universe are equivalent. Now, energy, the E in the equation, it's just the energy that you perhaps use to heat your home, or if you go jogging, it's the energy you use to run. The mass in the equation is just how heavy something is. So the mass of a human being is around 80 kilograms, or the mass of a bag of flour might be one kilogram. The C in the equation, this is just the speed of light, i.e. how fast light travels through the universe. So the equation tells us that energy and mass are equivalent. We shouldn't think of them as separate things, we should think of them as the same thing. But let's run through an example to see how this works. Now here I have a bag of sugar, which before I start putting into my cups of tea, weighed one kilogram. If we were to convert all this bag of sugar, all of this mass into energy, how much energy will we get out? So we can use the equation e equals mc squared, and e is the energy we want out at the end, and m is the mass, the mass of the bag of sugar, which is one kilogram. We have to multiply this by c squared, which is the speed of light squared, or the speed of light times itself. Now the speed of light is 300 million meters per second, which is incredibly fast. But we have to square this, multiply by itself, so what we get out at the end is 90,000 million million meters per second. And we multiply this by 1, m, the mass of the bag of sugar, and we get out 90,000 million million joules of energy by converting all the mass of this bag of sugar into energy. But how much energy is this? I mean, what does it translate to? Well, this value of energy is roughly equal to electrical energy used by the entire population of London over three years. So this equation says that if we can convert all the mass of a bag of sugar into energy, we could power London for three years. That doesn't just apply to sugar, anything with mass can be used. So you can convert apples pure into pure energy, or wood into pure energy. You can see why people are so interested in this equation, because it has incredible consequences. So we know that we can theoretically convert mass into energy, but it also kind of works the other way around. If we give energy to an object, it will theoretically increase the mass of the object. So let's look at an example. So you have a block of iron on a scale. Now as we heat up the block of iron, we're going to give it energy, we're going to give it heat energy. This is going to increase the mass of the block of iron, and it's going to make it heavier. Now if we take this energy away again, it's going to cool down, and it's going to lose this mass. Now this doesn't just work with heat energy. It also works with all the other types of energy. Say you have a spring and you compress it down, and you're giving it potential energy that's trying to force it to spring back out. And this is going to give it mass. Or if you throw a ball, you're giving it kinetic energy. And theoretically, it's also going to get more massive. Now this is obviously an incredibly powerful equation, but how can we use it to benefit us? Well, actually it already does. And a lot of the electricity in your home comes from the equation E equals mc squared. And this is through nuclear power. You see, in atoms, all the particles are held together by something called the binding energy. And this just stops all the particles from flying apart from each other. But in nuclear fusion, the atom is broken apart into small atoms. And this binding energy is released as this happens. And the binding energy is released as heat, and this is how we create electricity. But how do we know this is true? But if you measure the mass of the atom before it's broken apart, you'll find it slightly less than the two masses of the particles afterwards. It's because as the energy is released, the mass also increases of the two particles by e equals mc squared. But why stop there? We saw earlier that if we convert mass straight into energy, we release a huge amount of energy, enough to power London for several years. So why aren't we converting mass straight into energy? Well, sadly, it just isn't that simple. We don't have the technology to be able to do this. Now, theoretically, this can be done with something called antimatter. So antimatter is the opposite version of matter where matter is anything in the universe, carbon, oxygen, iron, all these things are matter. Now theoretically, if you bring antimatter and matter together, they destroy each other, 
and release energy equal to the mass of that matter. And we do this by e equals mc squared. But sadly, we don't have the technology to be able to create antimatter at the moment. But if we ever do, we'll be able to use it to create huge, huge amounts of energy. But finally, we have to answer the question, why is e equals mc squared so famous? There are lots more important equations than the universe, but why is it so much more famous? Well, perhaps it's just due to its creator, Albert Einstein. One of the world's most famous scientists, perhaps the equation is so famous because it's derived by him. Then again, it has some links to the Manhattan Project, the project during the Second World War to create nuclear weapons. And some people think this is the reason why it's so famous, is because people relate it to this. But whatever the reason, e equals mc squared isn't the world's most important equation, or probably nowhere near but for some reason it is the world's most famous and it is still important in science. So hopefully you now know what e equals mc squared is, you know where it came from, what it's used for. But hopefully I've got across that it isn't gonna change the world that much. It's a really useful tool in physics, but it isn't gonna revolutionize the world. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, uh, leave comments and I'll always try and get back to them. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at UCastronaut, but otherwise thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys soon.